Hi everybody, we're going to do some some computing. We're going to carry on our e-safety and we're going to be looking at another pillar of being safe online and that is to be internet secure. So what we're going to look at, we're going to look at how we can be internet secure. In particular, we're going to be looking at passwords and how we can build strong passwords. Now there's lots of other ways we can stay secure. This is one we are going to focus on. So what I want to start this uh, lesson with is just draw a little continuum. So this is a continuum over here. A continuum is something you can draw when all of the answers or all of the statements individually might be very closely linked, but the extremes are quite different. different. So zero is not very confident. Ten is confident. Where would you place each of these uh, statements? You might want to name them A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now I encourage you to uh, draw this out, but it might just be an internal discussion you're ha having with yourself. How confident that you can keep uh, yourself protected online? How confident are you that you can make a strong password, can spot fake news, can spot a scam, uh, know how to make someone feel better online, can keep yourself safe, and you know if content is appropriate for you? So there are no wrong or right answers on this. This is just for you. Maybe come the end of this, you might want to change the position of some of these because now you're a little bit more confident. Just for you to get a gauge uh, how you feel about being safe online. So what I want to start with is looking at why is it important to protect our our personal information? So now you might want to do this in the form of a list. What I want you to do is just list some few things down. You might want to do it in the, in the form of a mind map where you put personal information in the middle and you might want to explore the consequences of not protecting your personal uh, information. What might happen? Now I encourage you to pause the video and have a go. I'm going to show you some examples, but I, I encourage you to just to keep adding to all of your brilliant ideas. So some people might find out where you live. Now that could be through uh, data trapped in pictures. Uh, it might be uh, through clues that they can see in the videos of the pictures. And with that, they can find out if you're home or not. Maybe if we cast our minds back to our example in our previous lesson when we spoke about a friend posting about someone being on holiday, you might post a picture when you're out. Somebody can look at the data within that picture and they can find out when it was taken. If it was taken five minutes ago and you're at the park, then you're likely to still be there. They might find out what school you go to, if you've got a school uniform in, on, in the background or you're wearing it. They can see you, you photos, they can see your photos. They might be able to see your messages. Uh, they might be able to buy things without your consent. They might get access to bank details. Now this is uh, probably more uh, relevant to older children, but it could still be relevant to you. They might send you things that you don't want, like if they can get your address, they might send you some junk mail or things like that, or they might send you emails that you don't want, and they might be able to steal your identity. There are loads and loads and loads of other reasons why you might want to protect your personal information. Number one, it's your information, and you should be able to choose how it's used. And some people can even sell your information, so they're making money off of information about you, but you need to be able to keep that protected and secure. So one way, the most popular way that we can do that is with a password. So now what I want you to do is just have a think to yourself, what is a password? You may have passwords. Uh, you definitely uh, have used passwords if you've logged into PE. What's the purpose of a password? What's special about it? Pause the video. You might want to add that as a branch onto your mind map. You might want to do this as a separate uh, little bit of notes. You might want to colour code your mind map. So password is just normally text. It can be letters and it's just something that's there. It's a bit of information that only you should know or only the relevant people should know. And it helps to stop other people that don't know it from getting to whatever it's hiding. It's almost like a key. 
it's the key that goes into the lock that unlocks all of the information so lots and lots of people have really uh weak passwords and we're going to be looking at how we can build strong passwords so have a think about that what is a strong password are some of your passwords strong now i'm not asking you to share any passwords that you have because of course we shouldn't be sharing passwords especially if you might have overheard somebody else's password definitely shouldn't be sharing it but have a think to yourself and it's probably best not to write them down because if you're going to submit it then i would see it and that wouldn't be very secure have a think about how might you build a strong password one way that we can do it actually is uh, what i want you to do is have a look at this this is an example of a strong password look at it it's just a it's just a mess it's just a jumble of lots and lots of letters now there's some pros and cons to having a password like this some pros might be it's incredibly hard to crack it's incredibly hard to guess but a con of having a password like this is it might be incredibly hard to remember and if a password is hard to remember you might want to write it down but actually when you write it down it starts to become less secure so as much as this would be very hard to guess if it's very hard to remember it's not going to be very useful to us i'm going to show you three other examples try and see some uh, positives and some negatives of all of these examples so here are the three which ones do you think are strong passwords? Which ones do you think are weak passwords? If it's a strong password, is it a good password? Is it, think about what it means to be a good password. It's easy to remember, hard to crack. And what do you notice about the ones that you think might be stronger? So well done if you notice that the top two are probably the stronger of the passwords. What have they got that the other two don't? So if we look at this bottom password, we can see that it's a word, it's bananas. One good thing about it is that it has a capital letter, it has a mixture of uppercase and lowercase. One of the bad, uh, re one of the reasons it's quite a bad password is because what happens one way that people might try to crack a password is they might get a computer program that just tries your password loads and loads of times really quickly and what they do is they they work through what's called a dictionary and they will just try words lots of different words over and over and over and over again so eventually they are going to come to bananas so eventually that password will get crack cracked uh the next one we've got cat for two one three one good point about this is it's got a mixture of numbers and letters and another good thing it's got two words in here it's got cat and fur but one bad thing about this is actually those two words are related so if you're getting cat you might then if you're trying lots and lots of combinations you're going to try cat and lots of words that are then related to cat if you're getting through it that way uh, well, let's look at the second one. Again, we've got uppercase, lowercase. We've got some symbols in there. We've got some numbers. It's a brilliantly secure password, but it's incredibly hard to uh, remember. Now we're going to look at how we can generate passwords like the one and the two and how we can and uh, remember them later on. So let's have a look now. Can we create some rules? for our passwords is there some things that we can do in order to make sure our password is strong so one thing you can do you can use what's called a password generator and you can do this online and they will uh, create you passwords just like this they use a string of letters and you you can set how many you think that they should have a good general rule is about 12 characters so that's 12 of the individual either letters numbers uh, or symbols or more and generally when you use a generator you can choose what you want it to include you want to include capital letters uh, lowercase letters and the amount of different characters in there another way you can do is what's called a passed phrase rather than a password now I'm going to show you a passed phrase 
I went to Disneyland when I was four years old and it made me happy. And what you can do with that, that is a phrase that you can remember because if that was somebody's password, they've probably been to Disneyland when they were four. What you can do from there, you can create something that looks like this. If we have a look, we've got the capital I. First went to Disneyland when I was eight years and... I, I'm oh sorry, and it made me happy. Got a J there, probably should be. It might be jolly. They've chosen to do that. So they've created one of those really obscure looking passwords with a, and they've used a passphrase for it. Let's have a look at another example of a passphrase. My friend Matt ate six donuts at the bakery cafe and it cost him 10 pounds. Let's have a look. Maybe you want to have a go. Pause the video and try and see what is this password? What might that look like? Let's have a look. Here we go. My friend Matt ate six donuts at the bakery cafe and it cost him £10. So that's a, a clever way. It's a little bit... It's not a mnemonic, but it's like a mnemonic. Remember when we used... Uh, we did that for the planets. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. It, it's, it's not the same, but it's very similar. And it's a good way that we can remember a long string of characters. Another way that we can... Uh, another really good way, actually, to remember is just to use four random words. So it could be hairbrush, golf club, drill. That's three. Deodorant. That's just me looking around my room, thinking of those three. Oh, those four. Hairbrush, golf club, drill, deodorant. And I would write them in. Now you can do some extra things, like you can separate the words with slashes or symbols, or change some of the I's to ones, some of the S's to five. Let's have a look. We've got Jigsaw Quest Trait Fork. And in the middle of those, we've got the, some symbols. Now, they can be quite difficult to remember, but they're a lot easier to remember than uh, some of our some of the ones we saw right at the beginning. But these are... It, it's incredibly hard for a machine to crack passwords like this. Here we've got another one. We've got Glimpse, Stuff, Prize and Koala. Remember, if we look here, we've, we've changed that S to a dollar sign and an L to a, a one and we've got an exclamation point in there and also another one is to use things like emoticons so we might put a little smiley face a little strange face here or a little unusual face there in there somewhere so they are some rules that we can use to generate some passwords so what I want you to do is I want you just to have a go at this I want you to see if you can generate uh, some passwords, some random passwords using uh, some of these methods, some of the rules we've just discussed. So you might want to go back, look at these rules, and then try and have a go. So generate some passwords using the methods. And also, once you've done that, once you've had a go, it might be you might do five of them, you might do ten of them, you might even go back through some of your passwords that you might have for some of your accounts and think, can I create something a bit better? Can I create something a bit more secure? Once you've done that, have a go. Can you guess the two most common passwords? And they are very, very bad passwords to do. And if any of you have a password like this, I would suggest to you, I would strongly suggest you to change it. And I also want you to have a think about why are these passwords weak passwords? Why might they not be very good? So well done if you've generated some passwords. The two most common passwords is of course password That was a classic when I was growing up and the internet was sort of just coming into its own. People starting to have passwords and they had the password password because they thought they were being clever, but everybody else had that same idea. And 
I'm not sure which one is one and two, but these are the top two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those two are the most common passwords, and you can probably imagine like password one, password two, uh, are also very high up there. So any combination that I know, I can it can be quite annoying, especially like with usernames. Like you type in a new username, and you might have to put a number at the end because uh, somebody else has already taken it. Well, people do that with passwords. They think, oh, I've already got, I've already got a password. I'm just gonna add one on the end to make it different. It doesn't quite work like that. And why are these weak passwords? Well, King Cobra are two words that are related. There is an animal called a King Cobra. So you might want to put King and Screw. Those two, it might be uh, Hoover and King. Hoover and Cobra, I don't know. Try and get the words not related or unrelated. Bank account, I mean, two words that are related and probably if this is somebody's password, probably the for their bank account and the other one, eBay account. If someone's got that as their password, it's probably for their eBay account and that's probably the first thing that the hackers might try to use. So well done if you got that. If you can, suggest some alternatives that they could use instead. So moving on, I want us to look at how we can keep our password safe. Because as I've said, we're generating some quite complicated strings of characters for our passwords. And it's really important that we kept safe. they're kept safe. One way you can do it is what's called muscle memory. Now I find that uh, when I'm typing my password, I have what's called a muscle memory. So actually my fingers, when I'm typing, just type and I don't even think about the letters that I'm pressing. And when I actually, sometimes when I stop to think because I've made a mistake, I actually, I can't remember what it is. I have to then uh, try and forget it and then just let my fingers type. That's called muscle memory, when you just remember how to do things. That's one way that you can do it. And I do have a few passwords that are like that, that actually when I log into that account, my fingers just do all the work for me and I don't actually realise what I'm doing. Another thing we can do is try as much as you can i know it's more convenient but try not to save your passwords it's very easy to press the little checkbox re remember me but actually that gets stored and in the next slides we're going to have a look at finding some of that information that's stored on our computer that people could access so don't save your passwords as, as convenient as it might be try not to press that remember me button now I've just said don't save your passwords, but there are some things where it is quite safe to remember your password, and that's called a password manager. And I use something like this. So I have um, most of my accounts are all incredibly strange passwords, and it's going all the way back to the ones we did at the beginning that we said were incredibly strong, but bad because we can't remember them. So what password, man password manager does is it finds and it links those really strange passwords with the account that they're meant to be. And I don't need to remember because I only, I can remember one super secure password for my password manager and I let that do all of the work. So that's what I do. I have a really secure password that I remember and all of my different passwords from all my different accounts are all saved in the password manager. And I would suggest you have different passwords to different accounts because it's very easy to get, oh, I don't, I'm not going to remember my password. I'm just going to have the same one for my accounts. But if that gets found, all of your accounts go. Don't give out your passwords to anybody because you don't know where it's going to end up unless you have some really, really trusted people. So it might be an adult uh, or something like that. You might be working as part of a team. Like I've given you a password out, but that's because the information that's in there doesn't really need to be secure. If it needs to be really secure, only people that you want to have it should have it. And we can also do what's called two-factor authentication. Some of you might have that on some of your devices. I have that on my password manager. Every time I log in on the computer, it pops up on my phone and asks me if I want to let that person do it. So I know if somebody's logging in in a different country and I haven't logged in and I get a notification on my phone, do you want to open that up? Uh, I can say no. I got that the other day. Somebody logged into one of my accounts from the Philippines and I have not been to, to the Philippines. So I was like, that's definitely not me. I might need to change that password and I can press no, you can't have access. 
So two-factor authentication and most devices will allow you to do that. So if you want to, if you want to find out where all of your passwords are stored, you want to get rid of them, maybe you've saved them on your browser. If you've got an iPad, you can have a look through these. I'm not going to go through them. You can just go through them. Pause this. If you've got an Android tablet, you can go through there and see all of your passwords. And if you're using the Chrome web browser, you can see all of your passwords there. If you use something different, you can always go online and say, see my saved passwords on whatever it is. But yeah, I think you'd be surprised at how many of your passwords are saved in there. And again, this is all stored when you press that button, remember me. The computer hasn't got a magic memory. What it does is it writes them down in a book and saves them on your computer. So, well done for following on uh, that far. Here we have a nice little game for us. It's called uh, the Tower of Treasure. So what, are, what you can do to find this game is to go onto Google and search for Interland Tower of Treasure. You can search for this uh, QR code. What I want you to do is to navigate to this orange world. We're going to be covering some of the other worlds in some of the other lessons. And it would be really nice if you could download your certificate and submit it. So what happens is you're going to play for a few levels. We're going to talk about, uh, it's actually quite a fun game. It's got, the, it's got music that's very similar to uh, Crash Bandicoot in it. Download your certificate, put your name on it. Uh, and then you can you can submit it onto class Dojo if you want to. You don't have to, but it's a good game that talks us through staying safe online. Well done. Remember, to stay safe online, you're going to be spending the majority of your lives online or have some form of online presence. Keep it safe. Remember to be respectful. Think about your online persona. And think about keeping safe online. Well done.